Hi, hello, and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the for statement. So we have so far covered the if and the switch statement. And we didn't cover everything about the if statement or everything about the switch statement. Uh, when we go to wrap up um, one of these sections, we're going to do a little summary. Um, this chapter, really, uh, we're going to kind of look back at the if for in switch statement and talk about some other things that you can do with them. But then as we go along, we're going to learn even more. Okay. So don't worry about it. I've been keeping it pretty simple. Again, this go is for people who have never really programmed before. So it's great if you have some programming um, experience, but if you don't, I don't want to overwhelm you too much. So today we're going to cover the four. And as I said earlier, the four statement builds on the if statement and you may not believe it, but when we talk about the four, and before I get into what a for loop looks like, um, we're going to cover a few things in this section. And that's going to be um, taking note of what, how you can get into an infinite loop very easily with a for statement. And, and this is in any language. Um, that's for, you know, something that looks like a for loop or a while loop. And Go, by the way, doesn't have a while loop because the for loop is uh, versatile enough that it can fit the for and while loop of, let's say, C, C++, and Java. Um, we're going to look at how you can skip statement within a for loop with continue keyword and um, you can exit a loop early by using break. So what does a for loop look like? Remember I said um, the for loop, um, which you know, I call it like a repeat loop, repeating looping here, is it looks just like an if statement. You have this condition that you're going to test here, this blue box. And then if it's true, you're going to proceed to execute one or more statements or none possibly. So zero or more statement, because you can have an empty body in any of the if statement or switch statement, you can do nothing. Um, but generally, if you're going to have a condition to test, you probably want to do something if it's true. Um, and then if it's false, you're going to skip and not do that thing. The difference between the loop, the for loop and the if statement is once you, your condition is true and you finish executing those statements, you're going to go back and be able to test that condition again. That gives you the opportunity within this set of statement to adjust your condition so that eventually you progress towards a point where if you repeatedly execute this statement over and over, it eventually makes this for loop, um, this condition false, allowing you to exit the loop. So this can be like, I want to read 10 numbers, so long as my count is less than 10, I want to read a number, go back up, read a number, go back up and check if count is less than 10. And each time I increment in count, and as you can see, eventually count is going to get to be 10. And when I test it, count is less than 10, no. I come out and so I do not read another number, right? And you could use different type of conditions. While the file um, is not at the end, while there's a network connection, blah, blah, blah. And the list goes on, right? So that's going to be the, sort of pictorially, this is what your for loop. Now let's go and take a look at the code. So we're going to go over here and we do the same thing. We go into our chapter two directory or whatever chapter we're working on. And in this case, again, I'm going to start off where I left off and i um, going to open up the code. And this is where we left off with a st switch statement. And so we're going to do, like I said, um, the for loop. So Let's change this, Bam. say for statement. And so what you want to imagine is, let's say, for example, you wanted to print out the age um, a few times. So um, when we run our program as it is now, if we run it and we don't get an age we like, we have to run it again to try and get another number and see what output we might get. So remember when we were trying to get you know, some of these specific things, we would have to run it multiple times. So imagine that I actually want to get the age. So I'll put a space there. I want to get the age, a random age, get a age, print that age out. So maybe I want to say something like age, um, you know, age. Uh, too young to sign up and um, something like that, right? And so let me copy this. Um, because maybe I want to use something like this over and over. Um, so I'll paste it like this. Um, so we see sort of like what the age is, okay? All right, 
So, um, uh, you, and I could do multiple cursor in this actually. Oh, anyway, it, it's fine. Okay, so now um, let's ignore the switch statement for a minute. And so I'm gonna put a comment here and put a line here to say we're ignoring what a switch, what's going on with a switch statement for now. We're just gonna focus above here. And I wanna do this 10 times. So, you know, get the age 10 times and print it out. So that's what my objective is. So um, let's do that. So one, two, plus three, four, five. Well, that's enough. I'm tired of um, typing this over and over. And since the first time we actually do it, this is a short time for var age equal. So after we have the variable age, we don't need to do a var again. So um, there's no new variable being introduced. So we already have the variable, so we just assign to it. And so now, um, notice each time these two set of commands look exact identical. They are because I copied them, right? Which, which is we're getting the age using ran to get a number, and then we print it out. So let's do that. Well, um, let's don't confuse things. So let's actually comment this out. And I'm going to go over here and say go run main and there we go. So five times it ran. So I didn't have to run my program five times. I ran it once and I was able to get five different ages. Okay. Um, great. No, well, I, I reused the message um, too, too young to sign up. I didn't use any condition or anything like that. But you can see um, how we could have put an if statement or something. So the thing is, what I want to get at is instead of repeating this, um, over and over, what if I had something that looked like this? What if I had something that said, well, you know, well, some condition, so if you remember, let's go back a little bit. If condition equals true, we want to do some statement, right? That's what our if condition. What if we could change it into while condition equals true, then keep doing the statement. And that's essentially what our for loop is. It says for condition is true, just keep doing some things. So I want to do this 10 times, like I say. So for count, I'm going to use a count variable less than 10. So long as count is less than 10, keep doing what? Get the age and print it out. So I'm going to do just that. Now, um, let's grab this and push it to the top. And it's going to make sense. Okay, so what I do, I start off by... First, getting an age, and that's one time. So, hey, I already got an age once, so my count should equal to, what, one? And then if count is less than one, um, then I print out the value, um, I print out the age, then I get another age, that's the second time. Well, I don't need these because I'm going wrong in a loop. So let's see what's gonna happen. All right, um, so this looks like it's gonna work. Oh, this, I need to say var because that variable doesn't exist. Of course, I could have used count colon equals one. That will work too, shorthand. So, yeah, let's try this now. See what happens. It's saved already. So I'm going to run it. And bam, look at that. It's going on forever and ever and ever. And this is your infinite loop. This, If I let this run, it would run for as long as my computer is on. right? Because there's nothing that says that this condition would change over time. The longer the program runs, it doesn't change. Count is equals to one and it will remain one, one for ever. And so one is less than 10 and so that will always be the case. So it looks like if I need something here to say, hey, count, it should be equals to count plus one, for example, right? So I take the current value of count, add one to it every time I go through this loop, and now I advance count. So the first time I come in, oh, count is equals to one. Yes, one is less than 10. I come in, print the age, and maybe we should just print out what count is over here. So I do something like that, count, so we know what count is. And then I advance count, and I loop around, and I go back, and now count is two. So two is less than 10, I come back, I print this out, and we'll see that there's a little bug here, but that's not the important thing. What we're trying to do now is fix our infinite loop. So that's the kind of gotcha with infinite loops. And there we go. Now you could see <clears throat> I printed out 
age one time, two times, three, ten, nine times. I really want to do this ten times. So since I'm doing count is less than ten, I can just adjust this accordingly to be zero. Or I could have said, well, count is less than eleven if I'm going to start from one. So basically, if you understand how to count with offsets from like start with zero. This makes sense for you. It's more idiomatic of programming, where, especially in the C type languages, of which Go is, even though it's not quite like C, but it's in the history of C. Um, and the syntax of C, the general syntax of C. Um, it's generally, uh, when you count in, you start from something like zero. But if you need to start from one, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Just change this to 11 for whatever, um, you know, to adjust. Okay. But testing will let you know if you've got a number right. All right, so this is a for loop. So we, this is working just fine. Um, now, um, one of the things we might want to be able to do is say, well, I still want to be able to test and say, you know, for example, let's uh, on command. There's nothing wrong with me um, putting this switch statement now back in here. For example, I could put it here. And now I can say, huh. Uh, let's do this. Let's put this, copy this, and I'm going to stick it at the end here. Paste here. Paste it here. Uh, I can paste it all along. All right. So um, I'm not going to print out the H there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, check the current, since we got it before we came into this loop, I check it, print accordingly, and then after that, I get a new, I get a new age, adjust my count, and so if I run this now, um, so I get, I start from, let's see, it's saying from zero to nine, which is ten. If I don't like seeing that and I want something that looks more human readable, somebody will have to think about it. I can adjust it that way, and wait for it to save, and then I run it, and now, okay, one to ten, so I get my. Thing. So notice I was able to nest the switch statement within the for loop, and you can keep nesting this. Like I, in one of these cases, I could put another for loop or a if statement, and you can keep going. Just make sure that all your code is understandable. If, but these statements can be nested. All right, so we're not going to talk about that. And so let's say, for example, that I want to test for age. If it's less than 100, I'll keep going. But if it's old, once I get an age that's over 100 or older, um, I want to exit the loop. Well, one of the things I can do is put a, something called a break statement to exit, to be able to exit the loop early. And so using this break keyword. And so let's see if this gives me what I want. And so I run it. And um, let's see, where do we have 100? Hey, we have these here. And let's say put a message that says, FMT that print line exiting the loop early, right? And let me go back here, wait for it to save, and I run it. And it says exiting the loop early, but I did not exit the loop early. I keep going. So when you put break in a switch statement, the break applied to the switch and not to the four. So I'm going to fix that by taking this out. And I'm just going to change this, for example, for now. I'm say if um, age is less than, ah, come on. If age is less than 100, I want to do that. Close else statement, if statement else, you know, I know that if it's less than 100, it's there. Otherwise, it's greater than 100. And so I want to break out of this loop. So now, when my code save and I rerun it, you can see now when it's 100, I exit the loop early. Key thing to notice is that the break inside of a switch statement affected the switch, but you didn't really notice that because we were already in the default thing. We didn't have to do it over, but it's almost pointless in a switch statement to do a break. Um, but here in the for loop, it affected how early the for loop exit without it having to continue until this condition. So you could think of a break as short circuit in the loop, okay? So even though this condition was still through when I exited, you see count was, was three, which is less than 10, my break allowed me to get out of the for loop. But break has no effect on an if statement, none whatsoever. So that's one way you can exit a loop earlier. So, so far to review, we've covered 
if your condition doesn't change as you iterate over the loop, then you have an infinite loop. And something you do want that, and you might choose to have an infinite loop and then use some other condition within here to check and say, well, I'll break out. So this comes in handy if you have a, an infinite loop, you know, so you can say, I'm gonna keep my, it's true, I'll literally put through here. And then I'll say, you know, something like, um, so long as I, I get a 100, then I exit. So no, I'm not gonna be doing this 10 times. Um, we could leave 10, count 10 there to see um, how many times. So this is gonna do as long as the number. So sometimes you might end up with, what, six, right? It does, you, it doesn't, you don't know. It could be 20, it could be 30, you know, who knows? So long as I don't get 100, I keep going. And so if I end up um, getting numbers less than 100 um, 20 times before I get 100, that's how many times it's gonna go because my condition for existing this loop is only when I get 100. And so this could be an example of, I don't know how many um, numbers I need to read from a file or from, get from the user, so I'm gonna keep going until the user tell me to quit. So I'll read the input from the user, and if it's a number, I add it to my list and ask again for a next number, or if they enter Q, for example, means, hey, stop now, okay? All right, so that's one way in which you can use the um, thing. Another way thing you can do is you can do continue. And so, for example, um, let's try this. Let's say if age is less than 18, or let's say 25. If age is less than 25, we want to do... Um, print ln and we want to say, you know, age is less than 25. So skipping, so starting over. Okay, or trying again, something like that. So, um, bam, and let's just print out what count is. And then we use the keyword continue. All right, all right, so let, let's, let's save. And so what I'm saying here is this. If the age we get is less than 25, I'm gonna print out a message, but I'm gonna do continue. And what this continue does is unlike the break, which short circuits the, which forces the loop to terminate, this actually says, you know, go back and try again. So it forces it to go test the condition again and so long as we get an age of 25, all we're gonna see is this message and it's gonna go try again. But because we never get to execute this statement below, you're never gonna see any of these messages and you're certainly not gonna see the count, in, count increment. So let's do it, uh, let's, oh, well, actually this is gonna give me, end up giving me a, um, a infinite loop because if I come in and age is less than 25 and I go back and test, I'm gonna get through and age is gonna be less than 25 and I keep going and this is gonna be infinite loop. Hence why you have to be very careful of those infinite loop, right? Let me just prove this to you by running this. And uh, wait a second, did it save? Um, where is my thing? Continue. Oh, well, I didn't get to go in there, but anytime I, I end up in there, I'm gonna end up with an infinite loop, you see? And I keep going in, right? So, um, the first time I did not get an age that was less than 25. So anytime I get an age that's less than 25, I'm going to end up with an infinite loop. So I definitely want to be able to put my, um, getting a new age somewhere, um, you know. Uh, so here's the thing. Okay. So I put it here. Okay. So let's put it here. So uh, maybe we do var age, you know, equals to zero or something. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, var age is an int. Okay, and we know that's gonna be equals to zero. So now I come in and I assign an age, and then I test it, see what that age is. If it's less than 25, I go again, and so this is true. And what happens is now I test, get a new age. I test that new age, is it less than 25? And I go back again, and I keep going. So long as I get an age, that's less than 25, I'm gonna keep doing this. If I get an age that's greater than 25, I'm gonna skip this part. I'm gonna come here and test and see if that age is less than 100. 
if it's between 25 and 100 and 99, then I print this out, increment, and I go back, get another age, and keep trying. If I ever get to 100 or more, then I exit. So a little convoluted, um, but again, depending on what you're trying to do, um, you might have something like this, right? And so you can see here, um, when the age is less than 25, I'm starting over, so count is equals to four. And then when I go and get another age, count is still four because we never made it down to the bottom here, right? Because notice when I said starting over, we went and got another age and the count value did not change, all right? And then, of course, my loop terminates only when I reach 100. So this is some examples of how both you can get an infinite loop, you can exit a loop um, early, or you can short circuit and sort of force the loop to go retest the condition. But make sure that if you're going to retest the condition, um, that you have some way of recovering. Because if without this here, we would have an infinite loop simply because we have a true statement in this one. Even if we had put count is less than 10 like we had before, we'd still end up with an infinite loop because age would be less than, we could end up with um, thing than necessarily, but age would be less than 25, I don't increment count, I go back here, and of course, um, I don't read any, a, a new age, I don't assign a new age value, yes, so this would be an infinite loop if this was down at the bottom, so let me show you, if this was down at the bottom here, because we wouldn't have a new age, we'll come in here, count is less than 10, true, age is less than 25, assuming that's true, continue, go back, I didn't change count, I didn't change age, so these two things here will just keep me within this very tight loop. So, um, you know, when you test your code, you're going to make sure that, how, um, you know, you don't have any infinite loop. I should do some extensive testing. All right. So that's pretty much it on, well, let's, let me just show you something else. So um, you notice how we're doing var count equals to one here. Then we do the condition. Then we do this incrementing of count here. Well, there's another way um, you can do increment. You can say this count is equals to count plus one. And that is to simply use this, for example. And what this means is the exact same thing of what we had before, which is count is equals to count plus one. Um, again, that's from like C and B, PL or whatever that language was called before B, C. And so if we run this, it's gonna work the exact same way, okay? So short end for count is equal to count plus one. But you can combine the initialization here that occurs here, the condition here, and this um, increment or adjustment of the condition. You can combine these three statements in the for loop. And you can literally put this here. And since it's a separate statement, you have to put a semicolon between it, between the two statements. And we don't need to say var, we can use a short end, but we could. And this, we'll just copy it, cut it out, sorry, and we put it at the end here, and a separate statement again, and so like that. And so now we combine all three statements one place in, on the loop. And so this worked the exact same thing, except our loop, our file is two lines shorter. Okay, and it works exact same. Now, any part of this statement is optional. I mean, we can quite literally get to this whole thing and it acts like a for our infinite while loop. Or we can pull this guy out and put it at the top like we had before, or we can take out the condition. But if you do take out the condition, um, the test, let's say you wanted the test to be, you know, count is equal to one, so you want to initialize that, and you still want to increment count but you don't want to test so this is acting like a truth st statement here because you're going to make exit notice how you still need the semicolon between to say that oh you know what i have the first part and the second part and the, the last part and so this would still work you know as before um because this count less than 10 is true that's one way of going in to this loop but that's if you want to limit it for no more than 10, a maximum of 10, sorry, right, so no more than 10. And so you could put it, but if you don't care otherwise, and you just want to count, 
Well, yeah, there you go. Because the thing that determines if you exit the loop is this break. The other way we had it is that this would exit if you reach 100 or you got 100 or if you ever get over 10. So two ways of exiting the loop. So you could combine, you could see how with a for loop, you could combine and get some really complex behavior. Um, so what else do I want to say? Um, again, you could pull this guy out, um, cut this, put this here, bam, and then this also still works the exact same way, right? And that is pretty much it for this for loop. In terms of right now, I think um, this is enough. Um, by the way, the if and switch statement allow you to have an initial statement. And again, the same idea with a semicolon before the simplest initialization and the condition. But we'll look at that at another time. This, I think, is good enough for now. And see you in the next video. Um, next video, either going to be reviewing if statement and for loop like i said earlier or maybe we'll just move on and look at functions all right take care thanks for your time practice let me know if you have questions and thanks for subscribing if you have already subscribed thanks for spreading the word if you're doing that if you haven't subscribed yet please do and spread the word also see you in the next video take care